and welcome to another Mr. James Accounting tutorial. Today we will be looking at Accounting Unit 1, Module 2, Single Entry and Incomplete Records. This would be the first in a, a series of two or three videos that I will be publishing with your next exam in mind on the 10th of June. So let's get right into it. Okay, this topic escape accounting unit one single entry and incomplete records. We have not seen entire questions on it for quite a while. And uh, partly because the topic was removed from uh, CSEC and brought up into keep as a full bone subject but uh, the topic itself is covered in other topics such as control accounts uh, and uh, bank reconciliations and such so we can uh, Okay, single entry records, where the double entry system of accounting is not followed, but some form of recording takes place nevertheless, it is called single entry. This means that uh, although you're not keeping a full double entry system of records, a transaction is sometimes recorded once at least. Okay, this style of accounting means that an income statement cannot be drawn up since you would not have records for sales and so on you would not have sales journal and purchases journal but you will mostly have those cash transactions it results in a very limited form of a balance sheet that is called a statement of affairs now sometimes in an exam you are asked to write up a statement of affairs a statement of affairs is similar to a balance sheet. It looks like a balance sheet, but it's not a balance sheet. And for mo most teachers and students like to use the form of the balance sheet as a statement of affairs, but it need not take that form. It can take any form as long as you have the assets, the liabilities, and the capital on it. Okay, so the best way of looking at single entry records is to use an example of it so that's what we'll do and we will look right into it okay, with single entry records what we have to do is to determine what profit is how much profit was made during the period so that the, the owner of the business can go ahead and pay his taxes and things like that okay now um, since he cannot draw up an income statement because he does not have the uh, necessary figures he does not have the necessary records what he has to do is manipulate the data in a different way okay so we know that unless there has been an introduction of extra capital into a business the only way that capital can increase is by making profit okay so where it is not possible to draw up the income statement profit or loss can be determined by analyzing the increase or the decrease in the capital account we use an equation this equation we have here capital at start plus your net profit minus your drawings equal capital at the end okay we can sometimes call the capital at start opening capital or capital at the end and capital at the end we will call it closing capital right the drawings in a problem the uh, information you have given must simply be drawings and you have to calculate the net profit so if we get this figure 
from this figure, and we are given this figure, we should be able to deduce from this equation what this net profit is. So that is the first approach we can use for determining profit from incomplete records and single entry. Okay, we we'll get go right into an example next. Okay, we have here an, uh, an example. Sometimes the data is given to you like this in nice format. You have to add the figures at 31st December 2015, which will also be the 1st of January 2016. And then we have again at the 31st of December 2016, which will be the end of the year, right? Yeah. So, uh, notice we have the assets and liabilities neatly laid out for us here. But sometimes it is not given like that. Um, everything is jumbled into one and you have to select the assets at the beginning of the year and select the assets at the end of the year. You have must distinguish between the two so that when you use the accounting equation to calculate capital at the beginning of the year, you use the assets and the liabilities at the beginning of the year. If you mix up the assets or the liabilities with those at the end of the year here, what would you will end up with is capital at no time really. And um, it will be a capital figure, but it will not be at any point in time in the, your year. And it is a, a useless figure, okay? So you have to make sure you get the capital, the assets at the beginning of the year and minus the liabilities at the beginning of the year from it. Uh, similarly, you have to get the assets at the big end of the year and minus the liabilities at the end of the year from it. Okay? The drawings, like I said, would be given to you. All right? Also, if there is any new capital being introduced, you should be told that as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to deduce that. Okay? So, we will start at the beginning. We did it through here. Each tailor has not kept proper keeping records, but she has kept notes in diary form of the transactions of her business. Right? Notice she kept the notes in diary form. So, that is basically single entry. She is a give you details of her assets and liabilities at the 31st December and 2015 and 31st December 2016. Right? Notice that is one year, a one year period. This is the same as the 1st of January 2016. Right? And we have here the details. Okay, now if you are not given the details in, in a neat order like this, taken from a, a diary, uh, what you will have to do is arrange them like this before you begin to um, work the problem. Uh, don't mind if it's taking a bit of time to do this. You should go through the exercise and make sure you have it arranged like these and then everything becomes easy. Writing out your answer becomes very simple. Afterwards, in uh, 10 minutes or so, you can get your answer together. Okay, so let's get into the problem itself. First, we calculate the assets at the beginning of the year. We take all the assets and we add them together, we we'll get 19,900. Next, we calculate the liabilities, 2015. There's two figures, we get 4,700. Then we calculate the capital, so we take the assets here and we minus the liabilities and we will get 15,200. Next, we move to the end of the year, 2016. 
we had a poly asset set that date at 24,400 and up all the liabilities 3,800 the capital at the end of the year is 24,400 minus 3,800 equal 20,600 next we put it into the formula Capital at start plus net profit by the strains equals capital at the end. Okay, now if we have any introduction of new capital, we will simply add it on to the capital at the start. Okay, and we will have here 15,200, the capital at the start, taken from here. Add the net profit, we don't know, we are trying to find out the net profit. And then we minus the drawings. We are given the drawings as 5,200. You can look back at the data and you can see the last line in the data, 5,200. And that would be equal to capital at the end here, which is 20,600. Okay, so to get the net profit, we will carry over everything on the other side and the signs would change. 20,600 plus this becomes plus 5,200 minus 15,200 here. Uh, we'll get the profit to be 10,600. Okay, so this is how you can go about doing a, a single entry question where you are not asked for a statement of affairs. If you are asked for a statement of affairs, then you will have to approach the answer itself different. You would have to write out a statement of affairs at the beginning of the year and one at the end of the year and then do the same thing again. We'll look at that in the next slide. Okay, we have here two statements of affairs, one at the beginning of the year and one at the end of the year here. Okay, so uh, first you head it up, that's so a statement of affairs, and then the assets at the beginning of the year, you can put them together, you get your total assets, and the assets at the end of the year, you can put them together you cannot mix up the two like we said all right and then, then you have the liabilities you put them together at the dates relevant dates and we minus them we'll get the two capitals and then we do the same thing again now this looks similar to a balance sheet is that there is no set format for statement of affairs okay and um, you can use whatever format you want to. Uh, most people prefer to use the balance sheet format since it involves assets and liabilities. However, you can use this as well. It's a simple format uh, and uh, you can get your assets, liabilities and your capital together and show in the two side by side instead of doing it one and then writing up all this again to do the other one you can do them side by side since they are relevant and you get your two capital figures down here and then you compare it again just like before capital at start plus net profit minus drawings equal capital at the end and we take our figures from down here and we get our net profit here again okay so i hope this uh, will help you in your exams and um, there's another video which will show you how to uh, write up a, an income statement and a balance sheet from incomplete records where the information can be deduced um, look out for it in a subsequent video and uh, I will see you then okay if you like the video 
if it is helpful to you perhaps you can give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you again in the next video.